What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we get to take a look at a brand new Raspberry Pi product that we haven't seen a new revision of in nearly four years. What I've got here is the brand new Pi 500 and when it comes to the Pi 400, that one released in November 2020. It turned out to be one of my favorite products that Raspberry Pi has ever released and with the new upgrades to the Pi 500, I'm super excited about this one. And right along with the release of the Pi 500, they're also releasing a 15.6 inch Raspberry Pi monitor. So this is pretty cool. It's a portable monitor that can go right along with this unit. It'll also work with other devices that support HDMI video out. So you could theoretically connect this to an Xbox, PlayStation, PC, or Switch, but we're gonna be using it here with the new Raspberry Pi 500. As the name suggests, Pi 500, this is kind of based around the same chip in the Raspberry Pi 5. Just like the Pi 400 was based around the chip in the Raspberry Pi 4. So we can definitely expect a nice jump in performance over the Pi 400. And another thing we have here is 8 gigs of RAM instead of 4 like the Pi 400 shipped with. And again, this is a full-blown ARM-based Linux PC inside of a keyboard. It's totally silent because it uses a passive heatsink internally. And I've done a little bit of testing here with the stock clocks and a little bit of an overclock. I have not had this thing hit thermal throttle even under extreme load. And just taking a look over the unit itself, I've got the US keyboard version. At launch, we'll have the UK and US, but in the coming months, they will be launching several different keyboard variants, like German, Spanish, French, Italian, Nordic, and Japanese. So keep an eye out for those. On the bottom here, have some rubber feet so it won't slide around on the desk, plus a little bit of ventilation here. And of course, around back, we've got our I.O. Gigabit Ethernet, dual micro HDMI. We've got USB Type C to power the unit up, micro SD card slot, two USB 3 ports, and one USB 2.0 port. Your operating system is meant to run from the micro SD card, but of course, with the Raspberry Pi, you can always run it from USB. And I did a teardown. It looks like they may have planned to add an M.2 drive to this. Once we tear it down, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. But before we move over there, I did want to give you kind of a rundown on the specs here. So again, the Pi 500, kind of following the same lines as the Pi 5. We've got a quad-core 64-bit ARM Cortex-A76 Broadcom CPU. Stock clock here was 2.4, but you can overclock if you want to. It's got 8 gigabytes of RAM, two micro HDMI ports, both do 4K60 out, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, gigabit Ethernet micro SD card slot, it's got a horizontal 40 pin GPIO header around back, 802.11bgn AC Wi Fi. So we've got Wi Fi 5 here and Bluetooth 5.0. And just like the Pi 5, there's hundreds of Linux operating systems that we can run on this, but I've been running Raspberry Pi OS to do all of my testing right now. I was personally interested to take a look at the internals here, so I wanted to give you a look at that. And to get the keyboard off, it uses a clip system. Once we've got that kind of separated, we can just fold it over and unplug that ribbon cable. We've got the US version keyboard here. It'd be easy enough to get a different language keyboard and replace one of the US or the UK versions the way it looks right now. But underneath here, we've got our heat plate. This is passively cool. There's no fans to worry about. And for the CPU we're working with here, this heat plate is pretty massive. I don't worry about this thing thermal throttling, even though it's all enclosed. I mean, there's plenty of room here to pull more heat out of that CPU. But one thing I did notice here is it's using thermal conductive tape, so it did take a little bit to kind of pry it off. But once I got that out of there, not a problem. Uh, I'm actually going to reuse this tape here. I just needed to pull it off one time. If we take a closer look at this board, there's a spot in this area that looks like it should have housed an SSD. But the M.2 slot is missing. Personally, I don't want to go probing in this one because I didn't want to break the unit, but I know a guy who's probably going to do a lot with this thing. And if you're into Raspberry Pis, you know exactly who Jeff is, but uh, I'll leave a link to his channel down below. Uh, I'm sure he's releasing a video same time, same day as this, and he's got a lot of knowledge about these Raspberry Pi products, so definitely check his stuff out. But yeah, this does look really interesting, and when the Pi 400 was released, they did kind of a behind-the-scenes or designing the Pi 400. Uh, hopefully, they do the same for the Pi 500. If I find anything, I'll leave a link down below. But now I want to move over to the new Raspberry Pi monitor because this is going to go hand in hand with the Pi 500. These are sold separately. The Pi monitor is coming in at $100 over on their website. The Pi 500 is $90. But basically what we've got here is a 15.6 inch IPS display. Pi colors around back. We've got that red and white. I think it looks really good. 
We've got our power button, volume buttons, brightness button, and it's got this fold out kickstand. This does have full size HDMI. It's also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and USB type C in. And there are a couple things to note here. You can power this directly from the Raspberry Pi's USB port, but you're only going to get a maximum of 60% brightness and 50% volume. But if you're using a standalone USB type C adapter from the wall, we can max this out at 100% and 100%. Personally, I love the design of this monitor, and once it's set up with that Raspberry Pi 500, it's pretty clean. It's got enough room to route those wires directly underneath the front of the unit. All I've added here is a keyboard and obviously plugged in the Raspberry Pi 500. I've already started the boot process with the Raspberry Pi 500, and I am running Raspberry Pi OS from a 64GB micro SD card. anti glare screen, 15.6 inch, 1080p. Not a bad little setup here, and with those front-facing speakers, they do sound pretty good. Now, they're not going to be super loud, a little bit tinny, but that's kind of a given with these portable monitors. But one thing I do like about this is we've got the front-facing speakers. Most of the time, when I see portable monitors over on Amazon or even eBay, the speakers are downward-facing, sideward-firing. These are right in your face, so I can send that sound directly to you. So far, I've been having a pretty good time with the Pi 500, and I will have more videos coming up. In this video, we're just going to be taking a look at performance with the stock 2.4 GHz clock on the CPU. But I have done some testing with some overclocking here. I've managed to get this up to 3.1 and I thought it was stable, but about 45 minutes into testing, it did crash on me. So I need to do a little bit of tweaking to the overclock profile that I'm using here. But a lot of people out there are just going to be using the Pi 500 at the stock clocks. And at the stock clocks, super stable. Web browsing here is great. I want to show off a little bit of video playback. But I also ran some benchmarks, and I did want to face this off against the Pi 400 to see if it would be worth upgrading too. And one thing to keep in mind is we're seeing the same performance as the Raspberry Pi 5 here. I mean, we've basically got that same CPU here. It is a few revisions newer than the ones I've tested. So with that, a little more efficient, and software updates over time have increased performance by a bit. But just everyday normal use with this thing has been really awesome. I mean, a normal person just needing something for web browsing, email checking, document editing, video playback could definitely get by using the Pi 500 as their main desktop. Not a bad experience so far. And with this Pi monitor, I mean, it all just kind of ties together. One thing I wish I could have found was the white micro HDMI cable just to keep it super clean. But unfortunately, couldn't find the one that I have. So yeah, running some stress tests here. I've been running some benchmarks, installing some applications for a later video. I want to get some emulation out of the way on this, show you some overclocking and everything like that. But the way it sits in its stock form factor, stock settings, it's a pretty quick little machine. Here's some benchmarks that I ran. And again, we're facing this off against the Pi 400. First one here is the GIMP Photo Editor Resize Test. Lower is better for this one. And you can see that on the Pi 500, 28 seconds versus the Pi 400, 61 seconds. Next, we've got a browser benchmark, speedometer 2.1, 65.8 with the Pi 500, 22.7 with the Pi 400. And with this one, higher is better. I also ran Sysbench. Here's some single threaded performance. Pi 500 coming in with the 1061, Pi 400, 721. And I also tested multi-threaded Sysbench performance. Pi 500, 4,238. Pi 400, 2,843. So on average, the Pi 500 is around 2.5 to 2.8 times faster than the Pi 400 at those stock clocks. And of course, if we overclock both, we could get more out of each. But I wanted to take a look at stock performance here. And it's looking really good with the new Pi 500. I'm willing to bet that Jeff has already solved the missing M.2 slot dilemma we have going on here. He probably knows a lot more about this than I do, so definitely check his video out. But coming in with a price tag of $90, I think this would be well worth it to a lot of people out there. Super slim form factor, great performance given that we've got an ARM-based mini PC here shoved inside of a keyboard. And keep in mind, you don't need that Pi monitor to get this up and running. You could use a monitor that you already have. You could use a TV. If you want to get everything to match, it is available over on their website. But I do like this unit, and I will have more videos coming, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. Overclocking, emulation, we'll do some gaming on this thing. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the new Pi 500, just let me know in the comments below. 
But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. And like always, thanks for watching.